I think the best films, the best TV, the best any kind of story is a mixture of what we uh, what we know and what we don't know. I mean, we want to go and see something that we can know what kind of a film we're in and roughly what's happening. But if there was no surprises or there was no um, things we weren't expecting, uh, I don't think we'd like it. When looking at the conventions of narrative storytelling and character types, it is impossible to ignore the studies conducted in this area by both Vladimir Prop and Carl Jung. In his study, Morphology of the Folk Tale, Vladimir Prop suggests that all characters within a narrative fit into seven different character types. The hero, according to Prop, is the person who restores the peace within the narrative, often by embarking on a quest of some kind. The hero is normally male, and more often than not, the protagonist of the story. Prop distinguished between two different hero types, the victim hero, who is the main focus of the villain's attention, and the seeker hero, who actively seeks out and helps others that are put in danger by the villain. The villain, therefore, is the main antagonist, and usually creates the narrative disruption. The donor provides the hero with something that will aid him in his quest, usually in the form of an object, information or advice. The princess, or the victim, is usually the character most threatened by the villain and is eventually saved by the hero. The princess is also the prize that the hero is awarded with at the end of the quest. The dispatcher sends the hero on their journey. This is normally the princess's father. The helper aids the hero in their pursuit and normally has magical powers. The false hero appears to be good but is later revealed to be bad. He may also try to claim the hero's prize. Characters may fulfil more than one role. For example, the dispatcher may also be the donor. Carl Jung's theory of archetypes is a little more complicated. Jungian archetypes suggest that there are certain types of characters, situations and symbols that are innate to human psychology and therefore appear in every story ever told. Character archetypes include the hero, scapegoat, outcast, devil, woman and star-crossed lovers. The woman archetype has four subtypes. These are the earth mother, the temptress, the platonic ideal and the unfaithful wife. Situation archetypes include a quest, task, initiation, journey, fall and death and rebirth. Finally, the symbolic archetypes include light and darkness, water and desert, heaven and hell and the child. In traditional fairy tale narrative, the female characters seem passive and more objects to be won than characters in their own right. They are normally unable to save themselves from the villain and need the male hero to protect them. In these tales, women are shown as the weaker sex. With Harry Potter having a female author, it would be reasonable to assume that the series would include many strong female leading characters. However, the main protagonist and the hero of the story is Harry Potter. In fact, the most powerful wizards of all time, Dumbledore and Voldemort, are male. Does this suggest that J.K. Rowling has fallen back on a tried and tested formula, or are there female characters within the series that are equally powerful? Most of the older tales in the early part of the 20th century are patriarchal. In other words, we could just bluntly say they, they tend to be somewhat sexist. All decisions or actions that are, are generally determined by men. They reflect the general thinking of all societies, and most societies in the world, even today, tend to be dominated by men and show women as being more passive than active. Uh, however, that's not true in most of the folk and fairy tales that were being told in the 19th century. It's just that uh, for whatever reasons, tales that sort of uh, reinforce patriarchal notions are the ones that we have been carrying forward. Uh, there are many, many contemporary literary fairy tales written by women and some by men in which women are uh, represented as much more complex. So it's misleading to think that uh, all the tales tend to reflect women as being comatose, passive, and just waiting for a prince to save them. There are many, many tales in which uh, women are very, very much determined their own fates and sometimes the fates of their husbands. I mean, 80% of screenwriters are men as well. Um, so I kind of think those things matter. 
who's telling the stories, who's creating the, the myths in the first place and analysing the myths in the first place. And actually I think that that's a rather limited range of what it is to be a female. And I think that the women are much more complex than, than that would suggest. Most of my main characters are women, or girls. That's just because I'm a woman, I would naturally write a main character who's a woman. After looking to see whether Prop's theory is applicable to Harry Potter, it appeared that many of the characters fit into at least one of the seven character types outlined. For example, Harry is the victim hero, Voldemort the villain, with Hermione and Ron as the magical helpers. Furthermore, Dumbledore is both the dispatcher and the donor by sending Harry on his quest and preparing him by providing the information and objects that will help Harry defeat Voldemort. Sirius, Lupin and the Weasley twins also fit into the donor character type. Wormtail is a false hero who has fought for years to have died heroically. If taken literally, Ginny can be seen as the princess, however the prize could be the freedom of the magical world. Both Snape and Sirius are the opposite of the false hero as they are both originally seen as villains, yet are falsely accused. Harry Potter also fits very well into Jungian archetypes. Firstly, the hero is Harry, whose life is divided by a series of adventures. Harry also fits into the role of the outcast as he fails to live to the anti-magic values of the Dursleys. The devil figure is defined as evil incarnate and Voldemort fits into this perfectly. As for the scapegoat, both Snape and Sirius fulfil this characteristic, whose deaths mark important turning points in the narrative. Mrs Weasley embodies the Earth Mother, who is a symbol of fertility with her eight children and provides spiritual and emotional nourishment to Harry. The platonic ideal is Harry's mother who provides inspiration and the spiritual ideal. She also represents, along with Harry's father, the dead ideal. From the research conducted, it is apparent that conventional linear narrative stories such as Harry Potter appear to fit the ubiquitous structure that is outlined by both Prop and Young. However, these sets of characteristics cannot be applied to all narratives. Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad, for example, are problematic to both Prop and Young's theories as the characters are more complex, failing to fit into the character types as easily and by using multiple parallel narrative plotlines. Though the character archetypes did not appear to fit Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad, both the situation archetypes, the situations that occur within a narrative, and symbolic archetypes, the symbolic representations within a story, can be applied. The fact that Harry Potter fits in sea stories, yet Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad do not, could be due to their different target audiences, which may suggest that this allegedly innate understanding of narrative is hard to challenge until adulthood. Whilst both Prop and Junk's theories appear to fit into most narrative, some may argue that they are also quite limited, with narrative being far more complex than these theories suggest. Prop study was based on a limited number of Russian folk tales, and his formula is helpful but doesn't work with most narratives. It's it's helpful only in the work that he studied. They are, uh, from a structural point of view, helpful because there there are many plots that uh, resemble the outline that. Prop developed. In other words, if you went to Africa or if you went to Asia and so on, you would see that some of the uh, structural components in Prop's morphology of the folktale may work, but only on a limited way. And the same thing is true with Jung. Jung has no idea what he's talking about for the most part, because there's no such thing as archetypes and the collective unconscious throughout the world. We're very, very different humans. I mean, we, we all stem from a particular human species, but we react to the world, to our experiences in many different ways. I think um, that Prop is interesting in that the initial sort of thoughts that he has about the different kind of character types, but I think that there are also different journeys for characters that are kind of beyond Prop, if you like. Um, so I think a character could have a quest, but there could be a character that is a, has a romance storyline. And I don't think that quite fits so easily with, with the pop idea of the hero's journey. I think um, that there is, a, there is a sort of parallel 
sort of to the hero's journey, but they're more a bit more specific to the genre that you might be writing. So a hero's journey in a romance would be quite a different proposition from a, a hero's journey in a, a crime thriller. So it's kind of how do you apply those particular things to something that's more about a genre. I think there are more complex sort of tools for screenwriting and there's more complex approaches to screenwriting and there's different ideas about character journey. We are creating wonderful, uh, unusual films, but we don't get to see many of them because they are not included in the, in the general distribution of films in our countries. And, and these films are very exciting because they do show alternative ways of, uh, of uh, viewing problems, of, of conflicts in, in society. It's an exciting time if one learns how to look for the new films that are really innovative. And there are many out there right now, many. From this study, it would suggest that though both Prop and Young's theories are useful in gaining a basic understanding of narrative structure, in reality, they are both extremely limited and only appear to fit into generic Hollywood-style forms of storytelling. From this, it would seem that not all narrative from around the world follows a universal pattern for storytelling, with many stories featuring different characteristics from those which Hollywood is accustomed to. However, it does appear that filmmakers and storytellers within the Western world have begun to acknowledge this narrative pattern, starting to play around with the structure, creating more innovative, exciting and unpredictable stories. This therefore could suggest that though Young and Prop's theories may have been applicable to stories at the time, modern storytelling has moved on from them, making them both less relevant to narrative today. Thank you.